Hey everyone, I am Ahmed Gab. I'm a research assistant at University of Ottawa and working with PaperSpace on different machine learning projects. If you don't know already, PaperSpace is a cloud computing platform for GPU accelerated applications like machine learning. Today, I'll be showing you how to train the mask RCNN object detection model on custom data. In this tutorial, we are using a Jupyter Notebook that's running on an instance of PaperSpace Gradient with a free GPU and 30 GB of RAM. And the first step is to install the required libraries, which are Scikit-Image, OpenCV, TensorFlow with GPU because the instance is using a GPU, and Keras. After the libraries are installed, their versions are verified by printing the version attribute of each library. And we can see that TensorFlow 2.2 0.0 is installed, Keras 2.3.1, and Sky Image 0.16.2. These are the required libraries in this project. In order to build the mask RCNN model, there is a GitHub project that has to be cloned. This project has a code required for building the architecture of the mask RCNN model, train it on our custom data, and make prediction. Here are the contents of this project, and the two directories we will use in this tutorial are mrcnn which has a Python code used for building the architecture and train the model. And the second one is Kangaroo Transfer Learning, which is a dataset of Kangaroo images that we will use for training the mask RCNN model. Let's now move into the directory of the dataset and list its content. We can find that there is a directory called Kangaroo, which has images and their annotations, and two scripts. The first script is for training the model, and the second one is making predictions based on the trained model. Let's now move to the Kangaroo folder and we can find that its content are two folders. The first one holds the dataset images and the second one holds the annotation of these images. For each image there is an XML file with information about the object and the image itself. For the images directory we can list its content. We can find that there are 163 images and here is a sample image from the dataset that is read and shown using Matplot library. And for the other directory, it also holds 163 files, but these files are XML, which holds annotations for the images. Let's now inspect the content of the XML file. We can find that the XML file has information about the image, like its name, its width, its height, and also the XML file has information about each object. We can find that there is an element called BND box, which stands for bounding box, that holds the coordinates of the bounding box around each object. In this file, there are two bounding box elements, the first one for the first object and the second one for the second object. We can use Python to parse the XML file and extract the coordinates of the bounding boxes, as in this code, to find that the following image has two objects and here are the coordinates of the two boxes for the two objects in this image. Let's change the directory back to the root of this GitHub project and start training the model. We will follow six simple steps to train the model. In the first step, we are preparing the dataset for the model. The model accepts the dataset as an instance of a class called dataset. This class is available in the UTS module. Because each dataset has its own custom way of loading the images and their annotations, you have to extend the dataset class by implementing the required methods for loading the images and their annotations. The two methods we will implement in this tutorial are load dataset, which groups information about all the images in a single dictionary, and this information includes the image ID, image path, and the annotation path with image. The second method is called load mask, which groups all the binary masks for all images in a single list. Here is a code for a custom class called Kangaroo Dataset, which extends the dataset class and implements the two methods load dataset and load mask. For the load dataset method, it accepts two arguments. The first one is a dataset directory, and the second argument is set to true if you want to load the train data and false if you want to load the validation data. What this method is simply doing is looping through the images in the dataset directory finding the image ID, its path and annotation path, and add all of this information into a dictionary using the addImage method. 
And for the load mask method, it just accepts the image ID to load its masks. Because the dataset doesn't have a notation for the binary mask for each object, this method simply returns a bounding box around each object, which is all one. There is a helper method called extract boxes, which accepts the image name and returns the box coordinates for each object in the image and the image width and height. By building the custom class that extends the dataset class, we can now prepare an instances of this class to load the train data and load the validation data. For the train data, the isTrain argument is set to true, and for the validation, it is set to false. The next step in training the model is to extend the config class that is available in the config module. In this example, a custom class is called Kangaroo config, which contains some configuration parameters about the model. The instance of this custom class is passed to the constructor of the mask rcn main class. This constructor accepts the mode, which is set to training because we want to train the model in custom data, and the directory in which the model log is saved is simply log, and the instance of the mask rcn main model has an attribute that's called Keras model, which contains the actual Keras model. And the summary of this model shows that there are more than 63 million parameters to be trained. Not all of these parameters will be trained in our tutorial because we are just training the head of the model. After building the model architecture, Nexus downloads the weights using the URLib library and loads these weights using the load weights method. This method has an argument called exclude, which accepts a list of layer names to be excluded from loading their weights. After building the model architecture and loading their weights, next step is to train the model by calling the train method. This method accepts the train dataset, validation dataset, the learning rate, the number of ebooks, which is set just to 1 in this example, but you can increase the number of ebooks to reduce the loss. There is also an argument called layers, which accepts a value called heads, which means only train the head of the model. After the model is trained for just one ebook, the validation loss is 0.7. The Keras method save underscore weight is called to save the weights of the model. And here is a complete code for training the mask RC main model on the Kangaroo dataset and saving the trained weights. And here is a code for making predictions using the pre-trained model. We started by extending the config class in a new class called simple config which has a configuration of the model, like number of classes, which is set to 2, because we only have two classes, background and kangaroo. An instance of the mask RC in any model is created with its mode set to inference, because we want to make predictions. The pre-trained weights are loaded into the model using the load weights method, and images read and fit to the detect method in order to return the coordinates of the detected boxes and their masks. The boxes and masks are displayed over the image using the display in instances function. We can see that the model is able to detect the two kangaroo objects correctly with a high score of 0.9. But the masks are not accurate, and the reason is that the dataset doesn't have a notation for the masks and just use a bounding box as a mask. The model also misclassified some part of the background as a kangaroo, but with a low score of 0.7. And this problem can be solved by training the model for more number of ebooks or by using the mean score argument in the display in instances function. That's it for this tutorial. Just to recap, we saw how to train the mask RCNN model on custom data. The tutorial started by cloning the GitHub project used in this tutorial and inspecting its folders and the dataset used and their annotations and finally making predictions based on the trained model on the new data. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or on Twitter at Hello Paper Space. Gradient offers a free GPU plan so you can run this project at no cost. I highly recommend checking that out. Thanks for watching.